My name is Mike Ruma. I'm a maternal fetal medicine specialist. I work at Perinatal Associates in New Mexico. And what we're going to talk about today is the Epic and Affinity ultrasound platforms, the latest release of software, which incorporates a variety of new features. We're going to use this uh, new tool that sculpts and removes the extraneous uh, information that we have on the side, uterus and placenta, and that's called A-Reveal. And watch what A-Reveal will do to this volume. It helps to illuminate and show the face off in a quick fashion without having to sculpt any information. True view is quite remarkable. You really get a, a true sense of what it would look like in absolute photorealistic fashion. The colorings, the shading, the tones are truly uh, realistic. When we move to true view uh, imaging, we have this uh, pink hue that alone is simply coloring. But as you can see, what I, I've done here is I brought the light actually within the left ventricle using the depth capacity, which is unique to true view, uh, and allows the light to move, enter on, along a Z axis. And the light here in the left ventricle, as we've placed it there, allows us to see an illuminated uh, left ventricle, the mitral valve. And what's very interesting to me is that the light actually penetrates into the left atrium, illuminates the top portion of the wall of the left atrium, but does not at all enter the right ventricle with no penetration through the ventricular septum, so that the light is actually acting as it really would if I put an orb of light within the actual cardiac volume. This personally helps me have a bit more confidence that there is no evidence of ventricular septal defect, and if there were, we would anticipate seeing light emanate into the right ventricle. So as we see glass view uh, and we move into glass view analysis from true view, I think of glass view as looking at kind of a plaster of Paris poured into the cardiac volume and then removing the cardiac myocardium and being able to look into the chambers, the volume of the chambers, uh, kind of in a translucent fashion. For me, what I can identify here is a left ventricle. I can see the uh, aorta leaving the left ventricle, the right ventricle, and the pulmonary artery leaving. But what's particularly important uh, in this imaging is that there should not be any uh, fluid coursing across or any evidence of a chamber coursing across the intraventricular septum and I actually do not see that uh, which I believe is a good thing again helping us provide clinical confidence that this is an intact intraventricular septum uh, and that this is a normal uh, cardiac uh, septum present in this volume and that uh, to me is one area in which glass view can shine and provide some clinical confidence for uh, you and your patient. Touch view is very interesting because instead of using rotational knobs to change the volume, you can simply use your hand. And not only can I rotationally use two fingers to move this uh, in a, a Z plane like that, I can use a single uh, finger to move the volume in an X as well as Y plane. And then we are gonna bring up touch view to be able to put the light and drag the light for the patient yourself uh, around the volume in an intuitive fashion, just like any smartphone at home. You can double click and place the light in multiple different places. And you can also bring the depth of the light in to provide some unique shadows and illumination to the fetal face. I can also rotate the baby using 3D touch view. You can see how the shadows move in a realistic fashion in a very smooth and fluid fashion using touch view available on the Philips Epic and Affinity systems. In contrast to the traditional NPR mechanisms of manipulating a stick volume data set, this latest feature available on Philips software release is called NPR Touch. And I'd like to deploy NPR Touch by touching the touch screen. And you can see now on the display panel and the touch screen, all of your multiplanar regions, as well as the 3D surface rendered image. Instead of using the trackball and the left and right select key, I'm simply gonna interact with a single digit and place the region of interest within the crux of the heart. By tapping individual images, I can select the MPR that I would like to manipulate. 
I've placed the crosshairs within the crux of the heart. I'm gonna to move to this longitudinal image and I can uh, select either one of these region of interest edges. I'd like to select this one and slice into the longitudinal volume, creating a very nice 4D rendered uh, image of the heart. I can also double click the 3D volume and this helps deploy now uh, not only NPR touch capacity, but also the ability to use all of the aspects of touch view. As I approached NPR touch for the first time in early evaluations, I felt comfortable with it. Uh, the same principles that I needed to do with the trackball, I was more easily able to accomplish with NPR touch and simply touching the, the touch screen interface on the Epic or Affinity, uh, moving uh, the ROI to where you wanted, slicing into the longitudinal chambers in the heart and achieving that surface rendering of say a stick data set. So in my mind, in my personal experience with the NPR touch uh, as an option on Epic and Affinity, uh, I found it uh, very favorable and very easy to use and markedly more intuitive than uh, the traditional NPR uh, method of using the trackball and left and right select keys. Philips has provided us with tools that uh, were incredibly useful, faster, better image quality. We are seeing an evolution of ultrasound, which is truly remarkable. The advances are truly useful. They are helping us with efficiency. They're helping us with detailed image quality and providing the patient an incredibly enriched 3D volumetric experience. And I can't wait to see what the future is gonna hold.